When we first moved into our house, I enlisted the help of a few buddies to come help me paint our dining room. The color that I picked out, well, it was pretty terrible. Fast forward a year, we repainted the room, installed some new light fixtures, decorated the mantle, and the next item on the list was to replace our old, outdated dining room table. So here's what we came up with, a simple farmhouse style table made from construction grade lumber. Since this video will be focused on building the base, let me talk about the top for a quick second. Milling and gluing the boards was a pretty straightforward process, adding in the breadboard ends though, that's where things got a little complicated. First I cut a groove in the center of each of the breadboard ends using my table saw, and then I switched over to my plunge router to cut out three mortises. Then, using the router again, I cut out the tenons on the tabletop, added glue on the center tenon only, and then secured it all in place with some dowels. I explain everything in greater detail in my plans, which I'll leave a link to in the video description down below. And now, let's start working on the base. Okay, I know that I just flew through that explanation of the breadboard ends. My family, my friends, and this random guy from the internet have all told me that I talk too fast in my videos. Maybe I do, but I'll tell you, trying to find that balance between being informative and entertaining to keep your audience engaged, well, that's a tricky thing. Anyways, if you're looking for more information about those breadboard ends, I will leave a link to a video that I found super helpful when I made them. Also, the focus of this video is going to be on the base, but I at least wanted to quickly talk about the top so you have an idea on what I've done so far. If you have any questions about the table, or if you just feel like voicing a strong negative thought or opinion directed towards me, the comment section is the place to do it. So right now I am working on the, uh, I'm not sure what you'd call them, the leg assemblies? You know, the pieces that kind of look like the letter H, but taking a nap, these things. So the recipe calls for these pieces to be three and a half inches square. So I'm getting a few boards ready to be glued up so I can bring them down to that thickness. Another alternative is to just buy four by fours, which are actually three and a half inches by three and a half inches. So you could avoid this entire process altogether. I decided to make my own because I wanted to make sure that they were nice and flat and square and you know, and if they're already three and a half inches, well, they'll be less than that if I milled them down a bit. One minor mistake that I made when I was gluing up the dining room tabletop is that I didn't put any like scrap wood in between the clamps and the dining room tabletop. So when I took everything out of the clamps, there were minor little imprints of the clamp in the pieces of wood that I was gluing up. This time around, I'm going to avoid that by taking these scrap pieces of plywood and putting them in between. So kind of like a little plywood sandwich, I guess. So all the leg pieces are dry and they're out of the clamp. So what I'm gonna do now is take a chisel and just clean up some of the glue squeeze out before I bring them over to the jointer to get two of the sides square. And then from there, I'm gonna bring them over to my thickness planer just to bring everything down to its final dimensions of three and a half by three and a half. So because I glued up three pieces that were one and a half inches thick, these posts were about four and a half inches thick before I started milling them down. Needless to say, I spent a lot of time at the planer to remove an inch worth of material. I guess I could have used the table saw here instead to trim them down after I ran them through the joiner. Oh well, goes to show that there are many ways to accomplish the same thing when it comes to woodworking. Now that we've got the width and the thickness of these pieces to what we want, it's now time to bring them down to the final length. And I'm doing that back at the miter saw. After trimming one of the ends, I flip the piece around, set up a stop block and make the final cut. Next up, we're gonna need to shape the horizontal leg pieces. And honestly, the design for this is entirely up to you. Play around with it, have some fun. When I was searching for inspiration for my design, I found a whole bunch of cool ideas for this part. I went with a simple taper, which I cut out at the bandsaw, and then I flattened over at the jointer. So my dad actually helped me out with this next part. He said that it's best to have four contact points to the ground rather than the entire post sitting flat. This will help with keeping things level in case anything decides to warp on me in the future. And if I do experience some of those issues down the road, I can always add in some of those furniture levelers, the same things that I used in the coffee bar video that I made recently. 
So thanks Pops. Oh, and going back to the point I made about more than one way of doing things, I used a table saw to remove the material for one of the pieces and a router for the other. I'd uh, recommend the router because it left a cleaner cut and it was an easier process. Let's talk about the order of operations here before we go any further. I'm about to connect the leg pieces together with dowels, which you'll see here in a second. But for the center stretcher, I decided to try my hand at some mortise and tendon joinery. I cut the mortise when the leg pieces were assembled, which made things very difficult. So if you're gonna do this as well, I'd recommend doing that step at this point. I'm using the half inch doweling jig from Rockler here and it worked out amazingly well. After I found the center point in all the pieces, I lined up the jig, clamped it on and then drilled some holes. And after a quick dry fit, everything was good to go. So I added some glue, the dowels and then clamped everything together and let it dry for a few hours. At this point in the build, I was loosely following the plans that I made. I was kind of just making things up as I went and then adjusting the 3D model based upon what I already did. The 45 degree support pieces, for example, I wasn't sure how long that these needed to be. So I ended up placing the leg assembly on some construction paper and then traced it out with a pencil. Then I drew in the lines for the support braces to give me a better idea of what length would work best. So from there, I took some scrap 2x4s through the jointer, planer, and table saw to bring them all down to the same width and thickness. And then over at the miter saw, I cut a 45 degree angle on one end of each of the pieces, set up a stop block, and then cut the other side. Now would be a good idea to get some sanding out of the way too, because once you attach these pieces, it's going to be a bit difficult to access the space in between those braces. The easiest way that I've found to attach these is by adding some glue to the ends and then using a brad nailer to hold them in place. Afterwards, I drilled two holes with a 3 8 inch drill bit, screwed in a, uh, a screw and then plugged them up with some dowels. The middle stretcher was made from two 2x4s, which I first cut down to rough length at the miter saw. And then I ran the two faces that I'd be gluing together through the jointer just to get a flat surface on each. Wait. You wanna help? Yeah. Okay. Stick me up. Okay. All right, you're just gonna twist it. All right, thank you so much. Once the glue had some time to dry, I took it out of the clamps and again used the combination of my jointer, planer, and table saw to bring this piece down to the dimensions that I was looking for. In this case, it was 3 inches square. Alright, so just a quick disclaimer before you watch this next part. This was the first time that I've ever attempted to do any sort of mortise and tenon joinery in an actual project. So, instead of me telling you what I did here, I'm going to talk about the things that I should have done instead. First, as I mentioned earlier, do this process before you assemble the leg pieces because if you have an edge guide on your router, you'd actually be able to use it and get a cleaner cut. Secondly, I wish I made a template and used a guide bushing for my router. It would have been more precise and would have eliminated the need for any sort of chisel work. And lastly, if you can use your table saw to make the tenon, do it. This piece was very long and didn't really fit on my crosscut sled, so I used a handsaw for a uh, majority of the work. It wasn't precise and things didn't sit flush. I ended up using my table saw to fix some things off camera and used a clamp to keep it in place on the crosscut sled. All in all, it was a good learning experience for me and everything turned out great in the end. Next up, the top two stretchers, again made by 2x4s, and again sent through a bunch of tools to make them square and whatnot. Probably should have done all the milling at the same time, but like I mentioned, I was kind of just making things up as I went, to a degree. And uh, to join these pieces to the legs, I'm just going to go with some basic pocket holes and some glue. The holes will be facing up and hidden by the top, so you won't see them when the table is fully assembled. 
I did the final glue up in two stages, starting with the middle stretcher first. This was mainly because I didn't have enough clamps to do everything together, and I didn't have any clamps long enough here, so I had to be creative with attaching two clamps together. I made sure to put clamps a little above and a little below the middle stretcher for equal pressure, adjusting slightly where necessary to make sure it was square. Once that had some time to dry, I attached the top two stretchers using clamps to hold it in place while I drove in some pocket screws. I forgot to mention this earlier, but I'll be making a bench for this table too, so if you're interested in seeing how that goes, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the little bell so you're notified when that video goes live. For finishing, I filled in any gaps with wood filler and then sanded everything down smooth. Then I rolled on and sprayed two coats of primer, followed up with some white paint. After the paint dried, the table was done. All that was left to do was attach the base to the top, which I did using these Z-clips. You'll just need to cut some slots in the base, and uh, my biscuit joiner was perfect for the job. Also, big thanks to my buddy here for swinging by for a few minutes to help me move everything into place. I needed to flip everything upside down so I could mark off where I needed to pre-drill for the Z-clips. And then flip everything right side up so I could secure the Z-clips. Okay, say, I love my daddy's table. I love my mommy's dress. <laughs> no, I love my daddy's table. I love my mommy so much! No, who made the table? My mommy built the table. No, mommy did not build the table, daddy did. No. I love my mommy's table, Kanda. No! <laughs> daddy made it. No, mommy made it. Okay, mommy made the table. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You excited to eat food at it? Yeah. You love it so much? Mm. 